Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to Open Heavens Review for today, Monday, the 10th of May, 2021. I'm Ken Demajeko Doni. Open Heavens is authored by Adadi in the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for a new day and a new dawn. We say, Blessed be your name in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O Lord, that the entrance of your word will illuminate our lives. You will give us deeper understanding as we share at your feet today. You will bless us, draw us closer to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today, our topic is expecting a better tomorrow. Expecting a better tomorrow. Our memory verse is taken from 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that loved him. Our Bible reading is taken from 1 Kings 19, 19 to 21. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelve, and Elijah passed by him, and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen, and ran after Elijah, and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose, and went after Elijah, and ministered unto him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The message. Some people do not get the best from God because they hold on to what they think is good, and miss out on something better. Elijah was rich. He was the son of the wealthiest farmer in his era. By today's valuation, his father could be said to have had 12 tractor working on his large farmland. Any farmer who has 12 tractor, without doubt, can be classified as a millionaire. Elisha was comfortable. However, God had something greater for him. Don't be among those who settle for the minimum level of prosperity, while the maximum is begging for your possession. God wants to make you, take you to the greatest to the highest level of wealth attainable. Elijah thought he was wealthy, but he did not know that a day would come when kings would serve him and call him father. He thought he was going to die a rich farmer, but God had a better plan for him. God has a glorious plan for you too. President will serve you before you leave this world. Amen. Elijah was wise. When he encountered God, he traded his level of achievement for a higher one by allowing God to have his way in his life. Elisha surrendered, surrendered. He gave up sugar to receive honey. One, on the day the mantle of Elijah fell upon him, life changed. His life changed. God brought Elisha to the realm of ultimate greatness. He knew then that to receive ultimate greatness from God, he needed to surrender what he was holding on to. Beloved, you must offer God what appears to be your best at the moment so that he can give you what is better than your best. Peter and the disciples did the same in Mark 10, 28 and were eventually rewarded. Lo, we have left all and have followed you. How will God give you the best he has in store for you? What will God do to make you rich beyond your wildest imagination? I don't know. However, one thing I know is that God can do anything just to bless you. Whatever he has promised, he will definitely fulfill. If you are expecting a better tomorrow, be prepared to give up and surrender your best to God. He will surely reciprocate by giving you something better than your best. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic once more is expecting a better tomorrow. I know that for an average human being, while we are at our today, we we have plans for our tomorrow. 
we want our tomorrow to be greater than our today. We want our tomorrow to be all right. Yeah, and the book of 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 has given us that good news that I had not seen nor he heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. The thing which God had prepared for us. And uh, if you love God, you should definitely know that God has a great plan for you. A plan that has not even come into your, that your imagination cannot even, cannot conceive, cannot even withhold. It's so great, the plan of God for us. If you do not love God, it is high time you start loving God so that he can put you in his plan. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible reading today gave us an account of Elisha. And then we studied the, what happened in Elisha and the lesson we learned. Like our daddy told us, he said some people do not get the best from God because they hold on to what they think is good and miss out on something greater. Elisha was a rich man. And like our daddy said that in today's valuation, his father had 12 tractor working on his large farm. And anyone who has 12 tractor in today's values is a multi-millionaire. So Elisha had thought in his heart, I was going to die a rich farmer. So Elisha was very comfortable by all standard. But then God had a greater plan for him. Little did Elisha know that one day the kings will call, serve him and call him father. What a great plan that the Lord had for him. Elisha thought he was going to be Elijah thought he was going to be a wealthy farmer, like he said. But then God had a better plan for him by making kings serve him and calling him priest and calling him father. In the name of Jesus, President will serve us before we leave this world. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I told today that Elijah was a wise man. When he encountered God, he traded his level of achievement for a higher one by allowing God to have his way in his life. So, the key thing is that we must surrender whatever it is that we have. We must surrender all to God so that we can attain that realm of greatness that God has in store for us. We must surrender. Elijah surrendered his sugar to receive honey from the Lord. He knew that all he needed to do was to surrender whatever he was holding on the position he was in his father's farm. He surrendered or he didn't look at how big, how great it was. And what happened? God's great plan came to fulfillment in his life. We're told that even his, the, 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 uh, Jesus' disciples, Peter and the other ones, they also did say, Mark 10, 28, they said, No, we have left all and followed thee. They left all they had. Some of them, tax collector, fishermen, they left all and they followed Christ. And what happened? They did great wonders for God. They did great work. I can imagine the rejoicing that is in heaven. I can imagine their mansion. I can imagine the special place that the Lord gave them. Even while on earth, they were very great. That even right now, after thousands of years that they have died, their name is still in the book. We still read about them and learn about their stories. There are so many of their counterparts, contemporaries that were doing the same work as they were doing before they, they followed Christ. We never heard about them, but even up to now, we are still hearing about them and we associate with them. How great that is. We're told today that God can make us rich even beyond our wildest imaginations. Don't settle for the ma- minimum level of prosperity when the maximum level is begging for your possession. For your possession. God can make us rich beyond our wildest imaginations. He said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. I know that some scholars will say, if God does not even have it, he will create it. No matter what it is, even if it has never happened to any man before that level of greatness, God will create it for your sake and to just to make you great. He says, what he definitely says what he's definitely, I has promised, he will definitely fulfill. So if you are expecting a better tomorrow, the key thing is 
prepare to give up and surrender your best for God today because God has a better and greater plan for you and his plan will come to fulfillment in our lives in Jesus. And as we surrender all, you should surely know that he will reciprocate by giving you something better than your best in Jesus. Amen. I pray that the grace to surrender all, Lord will give us. And as we surrender all to him, he will give us something even greater than our best in Jesus. name. What are you holding on to? Is there something you are holding on to right now? And God is telling you that he has better plan for you. For you. It's, this is the time to surrender all. And follow the will of God. Because the will of God is highly greater than whatever the plan for your life. And the Lord will bring his plans to fulfillment in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. The prayer point says, Father, please help me to surrender all to you. So that what I consider to be good will be replaced by those better things you have for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you are yet to give your life to Christ, this is the time to surrender your life to him. Because whatever that plan you have, God has a greater plan for you. And as you commit yourself to God and say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me every of my sins. I surrender all to you. Accept me. And I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. As you have said this prayer, please go to a Bible-believing church and change your lifestyle and walk closely to God and His plan shall, be, shall come to fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening.